Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and today we're taking a look at what could be the ultimate PS5 Pro controller. This is the Scuff Reflex. It's got remappable paddles, instant triggers, a performance grip and loads of customizable options. But is it really worth the price? Well today we'll get this unboxed and we'll go over all of the features of this Pro controller, compare it to the PlayStation 5's DualSense controller and see what advantages this offers in the real world. And I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Scuff for sending these out. And I've also included a discount link below if you want to buy one yourself. Okay, so first up, the box. Now these boxes will all look the same regardless of the spec or the color that you go for. So we'll just slide this sleeve off, open this little flap up on the front, and here it is. And wow, this looks awesome. I've actually been trying to get my hands on one of these since they launched last October. So we'll just put the controller to one side and see what else comes in the box. Okay, so we've got this little accessory box which includes a braided USB-C charging cable, as well as a spare set of thumbsticks. Then we've got the manuals and the warranty information which we're not really gonna read. Now this is an extra accessory you can actually purchase during the checkout and this is called the player pack. It includes a hard carry case, some gamer grip, a 10 foot USB-C charging cable and four extra thumbsticks. So this case will do a great job of keeping it safe when it's not in use. Plus it actually looks pretty good and look how snug it fits in the case. So first impressions on the Scuff Reflex, the PS5 Pro controller, and this looks and feels like a proper DualSense controller. I mean, it's heavy, the texture's nice, and it feels premium. I like the little Scuff logo on the front corner, and on the side it says Reflex. But yeah, first thoughts on this controller, this feels really nice. Now, even though there are literally hundreds of color combos to pick from on Scuff's website, I couldn't decide between two shades of grey, so I ended up ordering both. The light grey was supposed to resemble the 20th anniversary PS4 controller, while the dark grey was my overall preference. Difference. Well, I think they both look awesome in their own right. The light one has a nice contrast against the slightly darker buttons, while the dark one has a more stealthy look. Now you might notice that the buttons are actually blanked out, so there are no icons on here at all, but they have that nice dual sense translucent design, so you can just about see through them and then see the color behind. And both of the buttons and the D-pad feel firm as you press them. There's no extra movement and they feel exactly as you would expect. And the same goes for the thumbsticks, they feel firm and they're nice and clicky. And it's great to see that all of the usual DualSense features are on here as well. So the clickable touchpad on the front, the two menu buttons either side, even the little speaker grill and the microphone mute button have all been included. It's basically a DualSense Pro controller. Now one difference you might notice is the PlayStation icon has now been swapped for a home button instead. But I guess that's down to a copyright or licensing reason. Comparing the Reflex to the original DualSense, you can really see how similar they are. I actually like the fact that Scuff have kept the same style rather than completely redesigning it. Across the top, there's the USB-C charging port and a small Scuff logo. And at the bottom, we've got a headphone jack and a charging connector. And yes, to answer your question, this does fit and work on the standard DualSense charging dock. And that is such a great idea. Now across the top we've got the standard L and R triggers and buttons and they look practically identical other than if you look really closely you can see a very slight honeycomb design going on. But when specking the Reflex controller you can either have adaptive triggers like we have on the DualSense controller or instant triggers and bumpers similar to having trigger stops. Well I've opted for the FPS version here so these do have the instant triggers and I'll tell you what after using these for the last couple of weeks I can say these are a real game changer. The fact that the trigger doesn't need to travel far means that ADS and fire firing are near instant. The triggers almost replicate a mouse click which is rapid. Most of the time I don't play too badly but I think this feature alone will make a huge difference to the games that I play. If you've ever played flipped buttons where your aiming and shooting are the LB and RB you'll know exactly what I'm talking about with that instant response. Now I have tested these triggers on racing games as well and although they technically work it's either full throttle and brake or nothing at all. So these triggers are definitely suited for FPS games unless you don't mind that effect. Because just remember these instant triggers are more of a a button rather than an actual trigger. Now unlike the scuff controller for Xbox, there's no option to toggle the instant triggers on and off, so you do need to decide at the time of ordering if you want this feature included. For me, I knew I was going to use these paddles on an FPS game, so I thought opting for the triggers was the obvious choice. And if you do opt for the standard adaptive triggers, you will get the full DualSense functionality. And flipping this around, this is where more of the Pro controller features really shine. So this looks completely different to a DualSense controller from the back. First up, we've got the Black Pro Grip, and this adds a rubbery texture which makes it nice and grippy. Then we've got these four paddles, and these are remappable, which lets you have pretty much any button assigned to them. From an ergonomic point of view, they feel great to hold. The outer two definitely feel better and easier to press than the inner two, but they still feel great. And I also like the fact that you don't really need to cover the inner two, you can just press against them while covering the outer two. And because you're able to remap practically any button to these paddles, it really is another game changer. 
being able to keep your thumbs on the thumbsticks and using the paddles for those extra buttons like jump, reload or even marking your enemies up in Warzone is awesome. There's nothing worse than trying to mark an enemy up while you're in the middle of a fight as you cannot remove your thumbs from the sticks. Now you might have noticed there's this little button on the back and this is called the profile button. Now cycling through the different options here you'll notice there's three different colours and these are for the three different profiles that you can use. And remapping the paddles on the back is really easy. All you need to do is press the profile button until you find the colour that you wish to use. Now press and hold the profile button until it blinks. Now simply press the paddle along with the button you wish to remap at the same time. Then release the buttons, press the profile button again and the light will stop blinking. And the fact that there are three different profile options means you can have three different paddle setups depending on the games that you play. Oh, and you can actually remove the paddle simply by pulling down on the outer two and then again on the inner two. And the first time that I did this, I was actually worried they would break, but they just need a really firm pull and then pushing the back in is easy as well. And depending on how you play, you are able to swap the thumbsticks out quite easily. By default, it comes with the concave ones fitted, but there's also a spare set of domed ones in the box. All you need to do is remove the front faceplate by pulling the bottom parts out here and then pulling the rest off. Now gently pull the thumbsticks off and replace them with the others. And there's also the option to change the height, so if you'd rather play with a taller stick for aiming, you can do that here. And while this plate is off, you can also change the ring colour. But this is something that you spec when ordering on their website. Maybe Scuff will sell replacement plates in the future along with these rings. Now by default there are three pre-built versions that you can buy. You've got the Reflex, the Reflex Pro and the Reflex FPS. But as of last month you can now buy and fully spec your own custom controller which is what I went for. This means you can have any colour combo that you can think of plus some incredible designs. You can choose the faceplate, touchpad, buttons and loads more. Then you can even choose whether you want to have trigger stops or adaptive triggers, with or without the rumble and even the rear grip. Now obviously the colours that I've gone for is my personal preference but you might want to choose something with a little bit more colour. Well, as for charging it, this does come with a 6 foot USB-C cable in the box, which is more than what the DualSense Extra controllers come with. You can use the cable for charging it as well as updating it via the PS5. The battery so far appears to last as long as the standard controllers, plus the fact that it fits on the dock is a real bonus. Oh, and as this has a Bluetooth connection, it will work on Windows, Mac, Android and iOS. Warranty is another thing worth mentioning, so I'm still surprised that these only come with a 6 month warranty, and for a controller that costs anywhere between $250 and $300, it should really come with a 1 to 2 years warranty. But I have got another scuff controller that I've had for nearly a year, I got that in August last year, and I've had no issues at all with this one. So the ultimate question is, is it worth buying? Well these start at £199 for the entry level version, but as soon as you start adding colours, triggers, vibration and other mods, it can quickly turn into a £300 to £350 controller. The most expensive that I could make it was £364 with all of the options ticked. That is crazy money. But assuming you just want the paddles with the instant triggers, you can get it for around £250. That is still a lot of money, but you are getting a PS5 Pro controller that could literally change the way that you play and win games. So yes, I would recommend picking one of these up if you think you'll use the features. And this scuff is now my favourite controller out of all of the controllers that I own. And would you buy one of these? And if you did, would you go for the instant triggers or the adaptive triggers? And if you drop a PS5 Pro with a blue heart in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my top 10 PS5 accessories video next. Thanks for watching. Please like, sub and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.